Hi, this is Jeff West from Oracle Product Management, and I'd like to give you a demo of TopLink Grid working with WebLogic Server. First, I'd like to show you a demo of using the WebLogic Admin Console and Node Manager to configure and start a coherence cluster. So what I'll do first is create my coherence cluster. In this case, I'm going to have it listen to my loopback address. And then I'm going to make it available to the cluster that I have for my application. Next, what I want to do is reduce the time to live to zero, which will restrict the coherence cluster to the current machine. And then I want to add a well-known address. This takes the cluster and puts it into unicast mode and has a specific host and port that the coherence nodes will look for in order to communicate with the coherence cluster and join the cluster. So next what I want to do is create my coherence server. So in order to use it with the node manager, I have to specify a machine. Um, and this is a logical mapping to a node manager instance that I can communicate with to start my server. Then I'm going to make it a part of the coherence cluster and tell it what address to listen to when it's starting up. Next, I need to configure the server start parameters. I need to configure the class path and the arguments. So I'm specifying the Java agent for, of Eclipse Link to make sure that my classes are weaved appropriately. I'm specifying some parameters to access the coherent settings or coherent uh, JMX beans from uh, JRocket Mission Control. I'm making sure that my coherence node is enabled for local storage, specifying a cache configuration file, and then I'm configuring the JRocket management port to be 8191 so I can connect to it with JRocket Mission Control. Next, I want to cover the class path and some of the elements there and what they mean. If you're starting coherence using the node manager from WebLogic, then you need to include the coherent server module that ships with WebLogic. I'm also including Toplink Grid, the classes for that, including Eclipse Link, the Java X Persistence API, Coherence, two management jars, the Oracle JDBC driver, and the jar file that includes my JPA entities. When you're configuring the class path for using the node manager, it needs to all be on one line. So if there's spaces or carriage returns in your class path, then it won't interpret the entire class path as one distinct argument. So I've configured the class path and arguments, and now I can start my server. Let's switch over to the server and watch the coherence node starting. You can see the coherence version number and we can see the services that this node is configured with at startup. Let's switch back to the IDE and I'll show you some of the code for the example application. First, let's take a look at the domain model and the JPA entities. For this example, I've chosen to use an XML configuration file to declare my entities and to specify the customizers for toppling grid. You also have the option of using Java annotations to do all the configuration that you'll see in this file. So here I am defining my address parcel and parcel event entities and shipment. And we can see that for the address and parcel entities, I'm specifying the grid cache customizer to configure them for the grid cache strategy for top link grid. Parcel event, I'm specifying the coherence read and write customizer. This is for the grid entity strategy 
and we'll be using this to show the right behind caching features of Toplink Grid. And for reference, the parcel event represents the event when a package or a parcel arrives or departs from a particular location. Next, let's take a look at the coherence cache configuration file. By default, coherence will look for the cache configuration file in the root of the class path, and it will use the first one that it finds. In this case, since I'm deploying a WAR file, I'm including the coherence cache configuration in the WebEnf classes directory. There are two key sections to the cache configuration file. One is the cache scheme mapping, and the second is the cache scheme definition. First, we'll take a look at the cache scheme mapping. This is where you define the names for the caches that you want your application to access. In the case of Toplink Grid, it will look for cache names using the base name of the JPA entity where Toplink Grid is configured. So, we have a named cache for address, parcel, shipment, and finally, parcel event. And then we are mapping those respectively to Grid Cache and Grid Entity. Now let's take a look at the caching schemes. Here's the grid cache scheme. This is something that you define manually using the scheme name, service name, and you need to specify the wrapper serializer for Toplink Grid. This maintains the entity relationships as you put entities into and extract them out of the grid. And since this is a simple example, this is configured to have unlimited storage for this entity in memory. Now if we look at the grid entity strategy, we'll see that we're also using the wrapper serializer. And in this case, I have a read-write mapping. And I'm specifying a limit of 250 megs. And after 10 minutes, entities in the cache will expire and be removed from the cache. What's different about grid entity is I'm specifying a cache store that will take entities out of the grid and persist them. In this case, I'm using an Eclipse Link JPA cache store that will use JPA to persist the entities into the database. And of course, I have to specify a persistence unit here. I have also configured a write delay of 60 seconds. So 60 seconds after an entity is put into the grid, it's eligible to be written to the back end persistence unit. So now what I want to do is deploy my application. I have this application wired to use Maven, and so I will go ahead and deploy the application using the plugin, and we'll take a look at the output of the managed server as the application gets deployed. We'll see some Eclipse Link messages. I have debugging enabled. And we'll also see coherence, the version, and coherence information in the output. So over here on my coherence node, I can see that a new member is joining the cluster. I'm actually going to deploy two applications. The first was my web application, and the second is my message-driven beans that handle the parcel events. So again, since this is also enabled for Toplink Grid, we'll see similar messages, and now we'll see that a third member has joined the cluster. Now what we'll do is switch over to the application so I can show you how the application works. So this is the shipping application. It has everything that you would expect to find in a typical shipping application. You can create a new shipment using a step-by-step -step wizard. You can query and track your package or entire shipments. And there's also some value-added features here that I have for troubleshooting, including being able to view session information and monitor coherence cache sizes. So in this case, I have not done anything with my application, and we can see that the cache size is all zero. So what I'd like to do next is run a simulation. What this will do is create a number of shipments and simulate the events, the arrival and departure events for each stop along the way for that shipment. So I'll go ahead and kick this off. This will give me a parcel ID. What I want to show you is we'll take the parcel ID and run a query for the events for this parcel. 
and we'll see that the application returns event. However, if I were to try to hit the database directly, we'll see that there are no events in the database. So at this time, the entities are in the cache and they're waiting to be persisted by Toplink Grid. So now we'll switch back over to watch the coherence node and then momentarily we'll see the entities being persisted into the database. So now we can see that a prepared statement was created and then using different bind variables the events were persisted into the database. So now if we switch back over to my SQL developer I can run a query and we'll see that the events are now in the database. So the nice thing about grid entity is you can manipulate the entities while they're in the cache and change them and you can offload the database for very small writes. So in the case of a large shipper like FedEx or UPS, they would have millions of these events going on per hour. And for each one of those events, you wouldn't necessarily want to hit the database. So this would be a good case for grid entity, where you could take those events, keep them in memory, such that as a user logs on to a shipping application, they can track their package and get up-to-date information, but you're not overloading your database with small writes. If you're interested in downloading the code that was used for this application, you can find it on java.net. There is a project called Oracle Parcel Service Example Application. There are three source code repositories, and the one that was used for this application is OPS R3.